I don't know about you, but I've had my mind blown by the recent advances in AI art. I'm inspired, I'm excited, I'm scared. Let's talk about this phenomena and how to take advantage of these new tools and reflect on what they mean for motion designers everywhere. I'm John Lepore. I'm a creative leader focused on designing the future, whether creating fictional technologies for films like Black Panther or working on real world products like the Microsoft HoloLens or the Hummer EV. Today, I'm teaming up with my friends at School of Motion to talk about one of my favorite new technologies, AI art. We're going to talk about this new phenomena, how it works and what it means for creatives today. We're also going to dive into some of the current AI art tools, particularly Midjourney, and show some of the ways you can leverage these tools in your creative process. Okay, so what is AI art? The recently popular AI art systems mostly work the same way. A human provides some kind of guidance and the artificial intelligence responds with an image entirely generated algorithmically. The guidance you provide can vary, but it's most commonly provided as written text, known as a prompt. You could say something like, make me a sunrise over a futuristic city, and within literally just seconds, you will have an image in front of you that shows a sunrise over a futuristic city. You might even see multiple options of this that you can choose from and refine further. So how do these artificial intelligence art systems work? Well, most artificial intelligences, not just for art, are trained on a particular area of focus. This training is effectively feeding the AI a massive amount of data relevant to the area that it's going to specialize in. I think of it kind of like if I wanted to learn to speak Italian, but didn't want to spend time with a tutor or a teacher or taking any kind of specific lessons, I might just decide to sit down and watch thousands of hours of Italian soap operas. I would eventually pick up the language that way. It may take a while, but just through that brute force of seeing the, the nuances and the differences in it being used before me on a regular basis, I would eventually pick it up. Now, AI works in a similar way. It's fed, you know, enormous pieces of information because it is a based on incredibly powerful or infinitely scalable machines. You could feed it thousands of materials, hundreds of thousands, millions, even billions of pieces of information for it to make correlations and connections in between. So the AI art tools that are becoming popular, most of them have an emphasis on two different kinds of training. Each of these is almost its own little miracle. The first is language. So every AI art system is able to understand written text. And in understanding that, it needs to have this great comprehension of language and also like the natural way that language can be used. The other training that these systems are, are leveraging very obviously is on art itself, presumably consuming enormous amounts of artwork to understand different mediums, styles, and different kinds of content. Now, in most cases, we don't know exactly what material is being used to train these AIs, and it's somewhat expected that they have access to the same kind of imagery any of us do, which is to say anything that has ever been published on the internet. So this broad understanding of how AI is trained helps me to calibrate my own expectations of where the AI is going to be successful or unsuccessful, or effectively, where is it biased? So for instance, you know, if you knew that I learned to speak Italian entirely by viewing Italian soap operas, then you might not be surprised that I might also be biased towards melodrama or not very good at natural, intimate, more human communication. So these, these aspects of understanding how these systems have been trained will help you as you begin to play with them and bounce different uh, ways of working with them off of it so that you can understand how to best take advantage 
of these powerful but sometimes limited capabilities. So let's talk about the specific AI art tools. And it's important to note, these tools are changing very quickly. I mean, they're rapidly evolving week to week at this point and are typically considered to be in public beta. The two tools that are resonating the most in my creative community have been Midjourney and Dolly. And I wanna compare the two. To me, I always think of Midjourney as having the soul of the painter, while Dolly feels like it's built around a team of stock photographers of, of some kind. Dolly will almost always make more coherent or clear or precise images, but at the same time, Midjourney's images can be incoherent, they can be unrealistic, but I find those qualities to often just be sublime. Midjourney always has much more sophisticated compositions and it has this incredible way of working with color and texture that Dolly doesn't even come close to. Now, if you can't tell already, I do prefer Midjourney and I want to talk a little bit specifically about how you can explore Midjourney's capabilities. So to access Midjourney, the first thing that you're going to do is make sure that you have a Discord account. Discord is a free to use messaging platform that you're going to use to access the Midjourney chatbot. Then make sure that you've entered the Midjourney public beta and sign up for that and everything and you'll get access to the Midjourney Discord server. Once there, you'll begin interacting with the Midjourney chatbot, which means you will be typing commands using the specific prompting format, and the bot will respond to you with your result, which you'll see being born right before your eyes. When you start this out, I encourage you to begin in a crowded chat room. It's great to see how others formulate and then also refine their prompts and the kind of results that they get. Once the chaos of that gets to you, Go ahead and just start a one-on-one -on -one DM with the Midjourney chatbot. Let's talk about creating these prompts. When using Midjourney, there are some mechanical aspects of prompt creation that'll give you very specific control over things like aspect ratio, weighting specific phrases, even determining uh, the level of stylization within your images. But before that, I'd like to talk about some broader theory around creating your prompts. The prompt, your use of words is now your new creative tool. You're gonna to quickly find that there's ways to improve your proficiency in using these prompts in the way that'll get the best results from Midjourney. The very first thing that I think it's important to emphasize is that with writing a prompt, you are effectively providing direction or creative direction. And it is no coincidence that some of the greatest art that we see being generated by tools like Midjourney are coming from artists who themselves are already very proficient at creating this work either on their own or with teams. And that is because they have this very high level ability, which is they have a crystal clear vision and a way of thinking about and translating that vision to execution. So I can't emphasize enough. First and foremost, you need to have vision and a clarity to that vision to be able to describe it and convey it to the AI art system to best interpret your direction. I think it's important to factor in what I consider to be Midjourney's default or its strongest bias, which is towards painting. Midjourney is not necessarily by default a graphic designer or a photographer or a 3D rendering specialist, although it can branch into any of those spaces, it does seem that its home base, the place where it is most comfortable, is in generating paintings. So you wanna keep that in mind so that you're ensuring that you are guiding Midjourney towards whatever your intended result is, knowing that first and foremost, you're speaking to a very experienced painter. If you're already comfortable discussing and describing creativity, you're going to be at a huge advantage. When you're working with an AI art tool, you're going to want to harness your creative vocabulary in ways that can be technical and very specific, but also ephemeral and help capture a mood. Feel free to describe specific technical lighting conditions 
articulate a style of composition, but also try and describe a mood or a feeling that you're going for in the image. All of this is practical and useful guidance as it is when you're providing direction to a top tier artist. I think it's important to leverage certain zeitgeists when you're working with Midjourney. Try to feel out what sort of subcultures or niches the algorithm is aware of. You'll also find that this can generate surprising results. One that always stood out to me was seeing Midjourney used, particularly by artists and creatives in my circle. They would often include the term octane render in their prompt. And that wasn't necessarily a way to, I think, make sure that the end result had the feeling as though it was created in a specific 3D physically based rendering system. I think it was a way to actually prompt mid-journey to create images that had things that are very commonly, or I should say stereotypically found in octane renders bright, intense, blooming glows and neon colors with a combination of hard surface modeling. So there's all different ways that you can use these sort of zeitgeists or reference these, these niches or circles of, of different artist communities to steer mid-journey in a particular direction. After I've become obsessed with reworking and refining a prompt, I'll sometimes start to feel a little stale, and at that point, I like to start playing with forcing some unexpected juxtapositions into the prompt. Looking at ways that I can throw a, a new light on things or even intentionally disrupt whatever I was originally planning to create just to see what happens. I mean, this is a tool that's going to generate results in a matter of seconds. I might as well just explore and see what else is out there. Uh, this can be done in any number of different ways. Uh, but one that's particularly effective is just to describe something and then say, and let's present it in the style of something else. This is a pretty common formula in everything from storytelling to pitching a Hollywood movie script. You might say, we're going to make a Batman movie, but in the style of Michael Mann's Heat. And you know, that formula works really well when you're creating prompts. I'll find myself saying, create a futuristic landscape that is also art deco. These ways of switching it up, I think also test our own creativity and, and let us take advantage of these awesome capabilities. As part of your prompt formula, feel free to include these little touches that can be used for fine tuning. Things like saying, uh, the image should be photo real or high detail. For me, this is like when you're collaborating with another artist and you want to set their expectations uh, for, for the result that you'd like to receive. Some of these parameters that you can put out there can also fall into certain buzzwords like HDR, 8K, or award-winning photograph or whatnot. When you're using phrases like this, it's not going to actually change the technical specifications of the output, but it is going to tell the algorithm to reference images that are maybe boasting that they have a higher dynamic range of colors in the image or exceptional high resolution detail. And then if all else fails, ignore all of these suggestions. Just riff, just play with it, have fun with it, type in absolute nonsense, type in poetry, musical lyrics, anything that comes to your mind. Mid-Journey's biases are pretty good at steering everything towards a result that is going to be at least visually or aesthetically pleasing, even if the content makes no sense at all. And you can get some amazing results like this. I will be chipping away at a prompt for close to an hour and my daughter will walk by say oh you're using that art creation tool and she'll come over and she'll just say something like show me big rainbow tree and i'll type that in and it'll be the most beautiful image that i've seen in the last hour so have fun with it enjoy it and just see where you can find the edges of this tool's capabilities and make sure to check out Midjourney's documentation for a bunch of precise controls that you can add to the end of your prompt, typically beginning with dash dash and then some specific terms like stylize, aspect ratio, and even quality. 
These parameters will help you dial in some of the way that Midjourney takes control over the images that you're creating. Okay, so just using our words, we can create images of untold complexity that are combining genres, mediums, even specific artists as influences. Is this even ethical to do this and work with this? It's a great question and one that I think the answer will continue to evolve as, as time moves forward as we become more comfortable with these tools. My personal rule of thumb is to think of working with AI art in the same way that you would when you are providing reference or guidance to a fellow artist when working on a project. There's typically no creative integrity in merely mimicking an artist's style and content. But if you can create something that feels distinct and, and new while still using other work that exists out there in the world as conceptual building blocks to arrive at your destination, I think there's still opportunities to create something distinct and interesting. It's also worth noting that these tools are not copying, sampling, or merging actual assets from the artwork that the AI has been trained on. Just like any artist out there in the world, the AI is merely aware of those materials that exist out there for everyone to see. And it's able to identify patterns and trends within those materials to inform its own decisions. So what are you gonna do with all of this in your workflow? When it comes to leveraging these tools, they typically don't provide the stability and predictability that is expected of a professional creative process. There can be more randomness than desired. There's often minor or even major imperfections in the artwork itself. But in some ways that can be still constrained, artists in the community are finding novel ways to leverage AI art in their process. I've seen people use Midjourney to create novel textures and patterns. I've seen artists use it to create contextual backdrops for content instead of typical stock photography techniques. And in particular, Midjourney seems really well suited to creating background matte paintings. I spent a little bit of time iterating on some background environments. It was really easy to create images that were pleasing, well composed, with beautiful lighting and color. Even as I'm doing this, my mind starts wandering and I start deciding, I wonder what jellyfish buildings look like. Before I know it, I'm playing around with permutations that I couldn't even imagine creating in photo collage or 3D. Even with a super sloppy pass at dimensionalization and After Effects, I could start to see how these images could fill in specific gaps in certain project workflows. There's even ways to leverage other AI-powered tools to enhance these workflows. You can edit details or even expand your canvas within DALI. There's AI-powered depth map tools that will create proper depth mats that will allow you to take your artwork and bring it into 3D tools to get much more nuanced depth out of these images. So what does the future have in store for these AI art tools? It's important to remember, these tools are in their infancy. It's not just even that these are public betas right now. These are effectively experiments that are offshoots of much broader explorations around applications of AI. The creators of DALI have emphasized that this tool was a fun offshoot of their other studies because they knew it would attract artists and in turn, artists would create fun outputs using this technology, which might generally ease some of the concerns of generally intimidating feelings that the public have around artificial intelligence. If there's anything that I want you to take away from this, it's that you don't have to be afraid of these tools. Even if you're against the theory of an AI assisting with your creative process, you might feel differently once it's able to generate any 3D model that you need on demand. Or imagine an AI that can take your completed design and recompose it for alternate formats that you have to deliver. 
My mind starts spinning when I think of the distant applications of AI. It's only going to get faster. It's only going to be more accurate and more in tune with what artists and the general public need from these tool sets. The folks behind Midjourney have described wanting to create imagery in real time so that you could walk through your images like a video game. Imagine entire films being created on demand in the moment that you press play, or a film that could even evolve or change while you're watching it if it senses you getting bored. Like I said, my mind spins. So for the time being, explore these tools, have fun with them, figure out what they do that you like and what you don't like, but also don't write them off as a novelty or a fad. The untapped potential in AI will almost certainly continue to impact the way that we create. But much more importantly, it could dramatically expand what we can create.